So hello again. Today I'll be talking about logic minimization. Last video we were looking at some ways to find patterns that can simplify the expression using Boolean algebra. Now today we're going to learn about this tool that really helps us simplify expressions with a lot less steps and a lot easier where you don't have to really recognize patterns anymore. So let's look at k-maps. So to start a k-map, what we're going to do is we're basically going to create a table with the variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put A and B here and I'm going to put C right here. Now it is important to note that if you're putting two variables together they should be next to each other in terms of significance. So this is the most significant bit and um, kind of medium significant bit. And now what I'm going to do is going to use gray code. Remember that gray code is the, the binary counting system where only one bit changes at a time. So we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So right here, these are switched. And that's just how it is for gray code, so that it doesn't change two at a time. So we're going to basically copy and paste this gray code into the A and B column so that we know what variables we're talking about. And for C, since it's just one variable, we can put 0 and 1. If we had four variables, we could do the same thing we did for A and B, just for C and D. So now that we have this table set up, what we're going to do is we're going to start filling out F. So the way we do this is we look at A, B, 0, 0, and then we see C for 0, and then that's going to be 1. We're going to do the same for 0, 0, 1, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 will correspond to this row. So you're basically just filling it out according to the variables and according to the numbers that they represent. Um, so a combination of these variables will become a row from the table. So now we're going to go for 0, 1, 0. Again, following the same pattern, we will have a 1. 0, 1, 1 will have a 1 as well. 1, 0, this is where you need to be very careful. So this, these two are switched. So you can't just keep on filling out in order. You're going to have to jump to the last line to fill out the 1, 0, 0, which would be a 0. And then you're going to do the 1, 0, 1, which will be the 1. And finally, you're going to go to the 1, 1, 0. So you're going to put 1, 1. And that's our first k-map. So the construction is pretty easy. It's basically following a set of steps. So now that we have our k-map, we're going to have to see how we're going to group each of these um, ones so that we can create new, kind of simplified versions of our function. So the first thing to remember for kmap, so the first thing to remember, we are going to be looking for groups of ones in the case of midterms. We are also going to be looking for groups of two, four, or eight. And if we had more variables, then it would be more than that, but it's kind of a very difficult thing to do. This is because binary is base 2, so any number base 2 will work for the groups. We just need to make sure that it is only, in this case, 2, 4, or 8. Another thing to remember is that we are looking for the largest groups possible and the least amount of groups. So now that we know kind of the basics of what we're trying to do with k-maps, let's, let's look at the example again. So we want the largest group possible of ones. They need to be next to each other. I forgot one other thing to remember, and that is you can go across each table. So let me let me show you what I mean. So for example, for this this group of four ones, you can either group them up here like so, or you can group them up this way. So that's kind of what I mean by you can go either way. You can also encompass, they are technically next to each other if they are on the 
opposite edges of the table. So we already mentioned for this case it's not necessary to group across the table so I prefer to stay within the table but sometimes it'll be the only way that you can group a certain one with another term so it is important and you can also do the four corners if if there are ones in every corner. So let's group our first group of four. It's going to be our largest group for this case. So now let's look for other groups. Now we have these two ones floating around without a lot of ones around them. So we're going to have to group them up in groups of two. To do so, we're going to choose the one, the one that is next to them and just make those a group. And there you go. Now we've grouped all the ones. They are all together and we don't have redundant ones. It is important to remember that redundant ones are, well, not necessary. So let's say if we wanted to do a group like so, it is completely unnecessary and it's already grouped. It's all, that one is already accounted for. So the way I like to think about it is each time we do a group, we are representing that amount of ones within the function. So if a one is already represented in the function, it is unnecessary to represent it again. But you can, just like these ones right here, who are represented twice, but that is only because they are looking for, we are looking for a group to group this single one right here with. Yeah, so it's basically it can be repeated, but most of the times we don't want to because we're looking for the least amount of groups possible, but we also want to cover every single one that is in the function. Otherwise, it won't work as planned. So now that we have the groups, what we're going to do is basically translate this into an expression of Boolean algebra. So just like what we did with the table, which was just looking for one and saying, okay, this one is according to A naught, B naught, C naught, we're gonna do exactly the same, but we're gonna look for the groups. So let's look at term one. Term one will be this group right here, T1. So this group right here, the small group from the top left, corner. So what we're going to look for are the variables that do not change. So in this case, C is always zero because it is a, you know, vertical column. But A and B, well, A, as you can see, is zero in both cases, but B is zero and one. So this is where it changes. This is what we're doing. We're, what we're basically doing is going to be when we factored out terms and we found a B or B naught, which is a one. So that's all we're doing with the K-maps. It's just an easy visual way to kind of find those coincidences in those groups. So for the first term, we're going to consider A because that does not change. And because it is zero, it's going to be A naught. And then we're not going to consider B because it is considered redundant. It'll be it'll result in a B or B naught, which is a one. And we are going to consider C, which is zero, so we could say it's C naught. Now let's go to term number two. This is going to be the big group. So our big four group, this is going to be a lot easier. We are going to we are going to create a term that is only one variable in this case because two variables will change, as you can see. So if we look at this group, it goes across both variations of C. So that's zero and one. So again, we're factor out, factoring out zero and C or C naught which will result in a 1. And the same thing goes for A. So this term 2 will only be B. And then finally, term 3, which will be our last group right down here on the bottom right corner. 
As you can see, C will stay the same and A will stay the same, so it's a very similar situation as term one. However, the not values change, so we will have A and C. When figuring out these terms, I personally prefer to always do most significant bit first and then go down to the least significant bit, but the order really doesn't matter as I covered in previous videos, so yeah. It's whatever you are most comfortable with. So now that we have all the terms, we're going to do the same thing that we did last couple of times. And we're going to say that f, the function that is that has this desired outcome, is going to equal the sum connection with an OR gate of all of these terms. So it's going to be a0, c0, or b, or ac. So, this is super important because what is considered could be considered a pretty complex system because it has it has six terms, it has six ones. So if you were to do it with the method that we were using earlier, you would have six terms to simplify using Boolean logic, which is definitely not easy. And if you were to leave it that way, it would be just so many connections to make if you were to do the physical system. It would just be very inconvenient. So with this tool called the K-Map, which is this right here, we are able to simplify an expression with a lot of terms into just three terms. So it is extremely important and extremely useful, so I re definitely recommend that you practice a lot.